Tommy, another busy week again, isn't it? Obviously, um, again, not much time to get the lads in and get a look at them, but I know we have had training today, so how's that gone? Yeah, really well. The camp is bubbling. Um, obviously, it's always easier to get up on it when it's dark, uh, when you've won and you've got three points in the bag from the end. So I thought, looking back at the game, I'm really pleased. A lot of what we did in the second half at Barnet, I thought we, we, you know, we invented that really. And uh, we took our chances to really good, well-worked goals. Um, and I thought the lads to a man, not just the defenders, everybody, when they had to do defensive duties on Saturday against a team that are, they relentlessly put it on you, they ask questions of, of you as a defensive unit. Um, I was really pleased. The ones that you don't look at as big and strong and aerial, I thought were big and strong and aerial when they needed to be. So, um, yeah, really pleased. But it's like you just said, you know, this the schedule for us at the moment is absolutely relentless. Um, and so then come to time tomorrow, so we've got we're fully focused on that now. Obviously, that result means that Hugo and Richard have a 100% win rate. As in the dugout, are you worried? Are you looking over your shoulder at them? You know, they were looking over the shoulder at me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, listen, that's an unfortunate thing. I, again, I'm not quite sure why I was suspended, although I know why I got three yellow cards. I don't know why. They don't, they don't give you all of that information, just that you're told that you can't be in the dugout. But that doesn't stop my input before and, and during the game at half time. So I'm getting to see the lads. We have a good chat. And I was really pleased at half time. I thought we took the sting out of the game after about 10 minutes. We really got on top, got on control. Um, and like I said, the first goal was a superb team goal. It was about 10 or 15 passes, I believe. And a great finish from young Josh. And then Hadges stepped in and hit a whirl. It's Annie from Mail. So, yeah, really, really pleased. Um, but we move on to the next one. Uh, two, two quick succession games at home. And hopefully we can uh, we can keep adding to the, pot, the, the, the tally of the points we have. As you say there, you have got to be pleased with the manner of the goals. Because it was so, such good passing moves. And obviously as well, Keon getting the two assists from centre-back. That's got to be pleasing as well. That, you know, the, those contributions are coming from all over the pitch. Yeah, I mean, I mentioned, I didn't mention names the other day after the Barnet game. When we concede a goal, we all concede. When we score a goal, we all score. Um, and and Kim was involved in both scenarios with that, you know what I mean? So he puts his hands up, giving the ball away against Barnet, but there's still a lot to do before they scored. But he could have affected it better. But he's, like you said, um, I thought the three central defenders were excellent on Saturday for all different manner of reasons, with the ball, without the ball, the intensity in which they defended in their own box. So yeah, it's something that, you know, it's not going, it's a work in progress, you know, they, we're still fairly new together as a group, you know, and um, I still think there's more to come. When looking ahead to this week, obviously it's a lot nicer to be at home at the EBB Stadium and have a double, he double header there, isn't it? And get the fans in. Obviously they followed us brilliantly over the last week, but it obviously it's yeah. much nicer to be at home. Absolutely. I mean, listen, the, the, the following both had, at Barnet and Borenwood was excellent. I think we took an extra 100 and odd from the Tuesday night on up to, to Borenwood. It just shows you a few more behind the goals sucked it in for us. And uh, we gave them the three points. I'm, I'm sure that the, the journey home was a lot better for that. Um, but yeah, at home, the support's been fantastic since we came in the club, to be honest with you. Um, and we haven't got a bad record at home, we want to we try and improve that further. Obviously, Southend is a unique challenge, isn't it? We all know about the horrible things that are going on off the pitch, but you know we've, they've shown brilliant spirit, haven't they? And, and although they you know, face yes. faced themselves at the bottom of the table, they're, they're not deserving to be there, and they are a good side, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, the people say the table doesn't lie, but it does, because they are they are a better side than where the position is. They're there, we all know why they're there. I'm not going to comment on what goes on behind the scenes. I don't know enough about it now, but I work there. So I do I do know what the club's like. I live in the town, and that, <clears throat> that town deserves a football club of that standard, that size. Um, so I think Kevin and his staff have done an absolutely fantastic job, and I'm, I'm not saying that lately. Um, I've worked with Kevin before at a previous football club, and he's a fantastic coach, and his staff are behind him 100%. I think the players deserve a part in the back for keeping at it, you know. Um, but at 7.45 on Tuesday night, I won't give two monkeys about any of them. So, so and, I'll, and I'll shake hands with them after the game, but then after that, I genuinely hope that the, the situation is resolved for the benefit of everybody in Southend, never mind just Southend United.